How do you think geckos are able to stick to walls? Suckers, perhaps? But then, how do they stick to rough surfaces? Then maybe some sticky substance? Nope, they leave no residue. Well, what about friction? Then, how do they stick upside down, huh? What if I told you the answer is that geckos use actual quantum mechanics to stick to walls? Yeah, I'll explain shortly. Today's video will be about the van der Waals forces, a really cool set of phenomena which surprisingly many people don't know about. Their rather quirky name comes from Johannes Diederik van der Waals, the physicist who originally proposed them. And I say forces and not force because they actually include various types, the Keyson force, the Debye force and London dispersion forces. Seriously, these names. In general, all of these involve an attractive force between molecules, which isn't a chemical bond, and for that reason, they tend to be comparatively weak. But let's start with the Keyson force. It was named after William Hendrik Keyson, the physicist who first described it, and it's an attractive force between inherently dipolar molecules. A dipolar molecule is a molecule that has, well, two electrical poles, positive and negative. This usually happens because of a difference in the electronegativity of its atoms, or how strongly they attract electrons, which causes electrons to spend more time on one side of the molecules than the other, giving that side a negative charge. And when two of these molecules get close to each other, as opposite charges attract, they tend to stick together. However, this requires a really close distance and is partially disrupted by the random motion of the molecules, which is why this force is relatively so weak. In fact, if it didn't exist, I'm pretty sure all we'd notice is some polar substances would have their boiling point decreased and it would be a bit harder to dissolve polar solutes. The Debye force, named after Peter Joseph William Debye, and by the way all the physicists I've mentioned so far are all Dutch for some reason, don't know what they have with intermolecular forces, is similar to the Keyson force, but instead of between permanent dipoles, it happens between a permanent dipole and an induced dipole. You see, when a dipolar molecule gets close to another molecule, its negative side actually repels the electrons of the other molecule, making that molecule's side positive. And then opposites attract, bada bum bada bam, attraction. And finally, London dispersion forces, named after Fritz London, who is not Dutch, nor British, he, he's German. Whatever, they're actually the weakest of the three, and they happen through a similar mechanism to Debye forces, but with the electrons themselves. As electrons move randomly around an atom's nucleus, they create very slightly non-uniform charge distributions, dipoles. And these electric fields can actually influence nearby atoms' electrons enough to cause them to move away, creating an attraction. But what does this all have to do with quantum mechanics or geckos? Well, it turns out that picture I just described of atoms becoming dipoles due to the random motion of electrons is not entirely true. It's kind of like with Hawking radiation, where thinking about virtual particle pairs being created and separated at the event horizon is a useful visualization, but you need quantum mechanics to fully describe it. In this case, there are actually two different explanations. The first one, the one you might learn in chemistry class, says that the wave functions of the electron clouds interact with each other through a perturbation term from the Coulomb force and create a system whose lower energy state is with the atoms closer together. However, this would be very mathy to explain and there's actually a deeper explanation by quantum electrodynamics. As you might know, the quantum vacuum is constantly populated by virtual particles which appear and disappear momentarily. All of these particles have wave functions. However, when the atoms get close, only wave functions whose phase matches the distance between the atoms are allowed to exist between them. As there are more retro particles on the outside than in between, a pressure is created which pushes the atoms together. This is actually the same phenomenon behind the Casimir effect, which I might make a dedicated video on in the future. And as we found out after many years of gecko experiments, this is what geckos use to stick to walls. Under each of their feet, there are about 14,000 microscopic hairs called CT, and each one of these hairs splits off into a thousand even tinier structures called spatulae. 
Like, that's bona fide nanobiotechnology right there. Each of these patulae is so close to the surface that London dispersion forces actually come into play to attract both of them together. Now, the effect of LDF is tiny, and each spatula is also tiny. Except, if you do the math, it has about 56 million of them. And of course, the effect adds up. Now, figuring this out was already pretty hard, but actually replicating it is even harder. But naturally, we humans have tried to take advantage of this for our own purposes. And even though we haven't attained the effectiveness of actual gecko feet, we have partially succeeded. For example, we have nanotape, also called gecko tape, which leaves no residue because it has no chemical adhesive. Although it's admittedly not extremely strong yet. We've also made creepers for robots, which use this technology, and a guy called Elliot Hawks listened to his intrusive thoughts and made a suit to be able to climb a building. As with basically the entire field of nanotechnology, this is all still under development. But it's still crazy to think that our most advanced adhesives may one day come from knowing how geckos stick to their walls. So thanks for watching! If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you in the next one!